Awesome. Well, good morning, Gas Street Church. How are you doing this morning? You doing good? Can you give me a shout if you're doing good this morning? Come on. Are you excited to be in church? Shout out to everybody online. It is always such a joy to have you with us. And um, already just such a sweet sense of God's presence here today. I love it when we gather. Do you love it when we gather as a church? I mean, I don't know. I just think there's something so powerful about this gathering where we can come and just enjoy one another, pray for one another and dig into God's Word. And I'm so excited to preach this morning. Um, I've had about a million coffees, so I am fired up this morning. So um, help me preach. Like, I'm I'm one of those guys where, you know, if you like what I'm saying, you know, like just nod or something. Let me know that you are in the room. And um, who's got a real Bible in the house? Just wave at me if you bring your Bible to church. Who who, who are my friends? Yeah, just a couple. I think Eden, is, is that, can Eden just come on there, Gabriel? That'd be amazing. Yes, thank you, Toby. I see you. Yeah, the real Christians. Let's go to, let's go to Luke 10. And um, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures and we will get this party started. Does that sound good? Okay, you ready? Here we go. Here's what it says. Um, one day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking Him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength and all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. The man wanted to justify his actions. So he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Do me a favor, this might happen one or two times while I'm speaking. Just nudge your neighbor in the ribs. Just nudge them gently, gently. Just ask them, are you my neighbor? Are you my neighbor? Hey, in the time that we have this morning, not long, I usually go for three hours, but this time two and a half max, I promise. Um, I want to share a few thoughts using as a subject, quite simply, love thy neighbour. Love thy neighbour. Let's pray together. Father, we thank You for Your presence this morning. We thank You, Jesus, that uh, You would be so kind as to come tonight and meet us, this morning rather, and meet us both in the room and online and God, that your heart for us is that we would find freedom in this place. Jesus, there are so many stories, so many testimonies in this place and we're grateful that your Word is able to go out and as it does, it lands on good soil. That Jesus, your Word has something for each and every single one of us today. We ask today that this wouldn't just be a transactional experience where I would say a couple of things and we would leave unchanged, but God, I pray this morning that you would bring transformation in this place. Lord, our hearts are ready, our hearts are open, our minds are ready to receive that which you would have for us. So come by your Spirit now. Oh, come and speak to us. Come and minister to us. Come and bring freedom and strength and courage and hope to those this morning who are without hope, those whose faith has been dry in the previous season. Pray today for the living water to begin to flow. Lord, that we would catch something of Your Spirit today, we pray in Jesus' Name. And someone with faith said, Amen. Can you give it up for Eden for helping me sound spiritual as I start? Thank you, Eden. Love thy neighbour. This uh, is a sticky situation. Jesus in our text is approached by a lawyer. In fact, an expert in religious law, the law of Moses. And this guy would have been somebody who was very knowledgeable in all 613 laws given to Israel through Moses, documented in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, all the ceremonial laws, the, the moral laws, the, 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 the civic laws, and you know, we don't have a lot of time to go through all 613, 
But you know, the point is that this lawyer would have known his stuff. Very smart man, much like some of you here today, some of you, you know your stuff. You've been around the block, you've, you've done this thing, you know how, how this works. And so in an attempt to, uh, to test Jesus, uh, he tries with this question, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Someone say life, like a South African, life. <laughs> In other words, he says, look, look, Jesus, I know you've said this and that. I know, God, you know, you, you've said some things, but what do you actually want? What must I actually do? You know, this guy seems to think that by doing something, he can earn his way into an eternal life. And so Jesus wants to straighten him out a little bit, uh, to liberate him from the notion that you can work your way up the ladder to heaven. And so the lawyer asks a legal question and Jesus turns it around and he wants to see if this guy can come up with a legal answer. He says to him, hey, what is written in the law? How do you read it? This gentleman says, well, it says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Brilliant answer, Mr. Lawyer, thank you very much. 10 points, love God, love people. Sign seal delivered, we're done. We can go home on that, love God. I mean, you mean after all the ceremonial washings and cleansings and what we can wear and what we can't wear, how far I can travel on the Sabbath, where I build, where I don't build, all the descriptions about righteousness in the scriptures. The first and most important thing is that we love it is that we, we love God above all else. God says this morning to us, love me. Love me. And he's specific. He says with all your heart, with all your soul, with, with all your strength, with, with all your mind. And I don't know about you, but I, I mean, I certainly don't always love the Lord like I know I ought to. Okay, I'm speaking for myself here. No one else in the room. I don't always live up to this. Oh, but God, you know, I've worked overtime this week. He says, love me. Oh, but God, I haven't always done right. Some of you are thinking this morning, I've made some mistakes. The Lord would say to you today, just love me. Start there. Oh, but God, you know, even this morning I messed up. I, I lost my temper. Love me. Oh, Jesus, I have some weaknesses in my life. I give into temptation sometimes. The Lord says, no, 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 love me. In a world of you mustn't, the priority here is on a you must. Because the Lord would say that if you can just get the you must right, I don't have to worry about the you mustn't. Is that even a word? I don't, even, I don't even have to worry about the you mustn't. I hear the Lord say today, if you would stop approaching me like a police officer that is going to arrest you every time you slip up and, 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 and start to get this right, loving me, you won't break the law because you fear getting arrested and thrown into jail, but rather you won't break the law because you love me. And some of you here today, you, you need to get out of your own heads. You need to get out of your own heads and stop focusing on what you get wrong and what you got wrong six years ago and start considering today what you can get right. That is a starting point for us today. Love me, the, the, loving, the loving myself part, well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good with that. I mean, some of you, you know, you know how to take care of yourselves. I've seen you this morning, you're looking pretty good. The loving myself part, uh, that, that part is, is easy. Now, now, this won't be a problem for any of you because, you know, I'm thinking very highly of you this morning. Of course I am. But for me, pray for me. Sometimes, sometimes I have trouble with loving thy neighbor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, 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 sometimes I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit tested. And the lawyer, you know, he thinks that he can, he can perform the law pretty well. Oh, as long as you can narrow down who qualifies as my neighbor. Let me ask you this morning, what are the core values through which you let people into your life? What are the values by which you let God into your life or anybody? What are the circumstances by which people can get 
close to you if we grew up the same, perhaps? Socioeconomic parameters, political alignment, loving God and loving people, these are the two priorities. And let me ask you this morning as well, what are your priorities today? I wanna get us all to consider whether or not our priorities in life align with that of, with that of Jesus. Or are they somewhat different? And I read this text, love God, love people. Listen, I feel challenged. The Word of the Lord ought to, ought to challenge you. It's not designed to just tickle us every now and then, but the Word of the Lord, is, it's alive, it's active, it's sharp, it's sharper than a double-edged sword. It's able to get into the spaces and areas of our lives that perhaps nothing else can get to. And you and I have to begin to allow the Word of God to, to, to bring a challenge to the table. When I read this, I'm challenged, hence why Mr. Lawyer in our text, you know, he's, he's a bit naughty. He's, he's looking for a technicality. He's looking for a way out, a means of escape, and oh, but God. You know, lawyers, of course, are experts. You know, they get paid the big bucks for looking for loopholes. And I know this because I've seen all the legal uh, uh, documentaries and television shows on Netflix. So, so, so I, know all, I know all about what lawyers do. Um, how do we know this though in our text by his question, who is my neighbor? I wonder if when it comes to what God is asking you and I to do at this stage in our lives, I wonder if at times we look for technicalities. What is the loophole that you're looking for right now? What are your oh but gods? Come on, we've all got oh but gods. Oh but God, I can't, I can't do this right now because I'm too busy. Oh but God, they don't need me, it looks, it looks all right in here. I mean, I, they don't need me around here. It looks, it looks all right. Oh, but God, it's, I'm in a season of rest. Yeah, but it's, it's been five years. <laughs> come on, come on. You ought to open up your heart and your mind to what the Lord may be saying today. I know, I know it, the rest is good, but, but it's, been, it's been a good while now. And you know, it's Team Sunday today. I don't know if we told you that already, where you know, in a moment we're gonna dismiss you and you're gonna go outside there and there's gonna be a whole bunch of tables and you can sign up to join uh, one of our serve teams uh, here at Gas Street. And you know, we're meant, to, we're meant to be doing just that, encouraging you to, to, to sign up to a team, you know, come and join and serve what God is doing here, but you know what, that would be awesome. And yes, we do need you because the kingdom of God is advancing. I don't know if you're aware of that, but the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing at this time and in this season. So yes, we do need you, but let's just park that for a second because there's no point in you signing up for a serve team if you and I don't get our priorities in order and consider first doing it because we love God and because we love our neighbour. That ought to be the foundation. That ought to be the foundation. I don't always feel like getting up here and encouraging you. <laughs> Newsflash, I know. <laughs> you thought it's easy for you, buddy. No, 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 I don't always feel like it, but, but, because, but because I love the Lord, but because I love you, I love my neighbour, I realise and I recognise the importance of, of doing my part, of, of encouraging my neighbour. And, 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 as, and as I pray, you know, I have no idea where you're coming from. But the Lord knows, the Lord would call us here today for each and every single one of us to consider first our love for Him, then secondary, we can apply ourselves to the things of God. Oh, that's why I turn up, how about you? What does this look like? If you're taking notes, write this down. Firstly, it looks like sacrifice and service. Yeah, it does, loving God and loving your neighbour, it looks like sacrifice and service. Jesus is so chilled. Who's my neighbor? This lawyer asked. And you know, Jesus is cool. You know, he's, he's not worried about much of anything. You know, he's Jesus. He can, he can be chill. He doesn't even answer his question. Instead, he responds with a story. He says, a Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. Imagine that you asked him a question, they respond with a story. And he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road and by chance, a priest came along, a pastor, the clergy, the Dr. Nick Drakes of the world, the ones that handle our theology among us. And this clergy person saw the man lying there, Nick Drake would never do this, crossed the road on the other side and passed him by. 
Next, next up, a Levite. Luke plus Anna Hellebranth walk past. They'd never do this either. Looked at the man and passed by on the other side. Let me break this down because some of you are a little bit confused about how this applies to us. And let me do some internal processing while I do that. Have you ever been surprised when you were in trouble at who didn't text you? Yeah. <laughs> that was too strong, okay. <laughs> that, was, that was too strong there, Trevine. <laughs> Have you ever been surprised when, you know, things are tough and who doesn't send you a fiver on Monzo? Come on. <laughs> that's, that's where he, the Bible says, then a despised Samaritan um, came along and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him, soothed his wounds, bandaged him, put him on his donkey and took him in. Now Jesus, you know, he's, he, he's working the lawyer. He's setting, he's, setting him, he's setting him up because Jews and Samaritans, you know, as we know, had no dealings. In fact, in John 4, when Jesus talked to a Samaritan woman, she said, look, you know your people don't talk to me. So Jesus says this, he says, so who then is your neighbor? The priest, Dr. Nick Drake, Luke plus Anna, the Samaritan, the person who helped you though they weren't your neighbor. Look, if we're gonna, if we're gonna be like God, we have to love like him. We have to love like him. In Matthew 20, 28, Jesus said, I came not to be served, but to serve others and to give my life. You know, we sing, choose me. Send me, Lord. I'll, I'll give up my life. You wouldn't give up two double cheeseburgers and meet him fries from McDonald's at 11 p.m. at night. And that's my order. I'd struggle. We, choose, we sing, send me, send me, Lord. Some of, us, some of us would struggle with that. What does this love look like? It looks like loving those who maybe don't necessarily look like you or vote like you or dress like you. I hear the Lord say to us this morning, take down the tribunal by which you try people before you love them. Then who's your neighbor? The one, says the lawyer, who showed him mercy. Jesus says, yes, now go and do the same. This is about sacrifice and service. This is what I want you to consider for the next few moments. What areas of my, of my life am I giving something up? Am I sacrificing in order that I may serve? This story of the Good Samaritan is an incredible demonstration of not only who is your neighbor, but also how to love your neighbor the Good Samaritan saw a need, intervened at a great expense to himself, time, effort, money, and reputation as he defies cultural norms. A great example of sacrificial service. Secondly, here's another thing if you're taking notes, write this down. This is about sitting and receiving. Now, now I couldn't help myself. I had to read just a little bit further. This is three sermons in one in 20 minutes, okay? I had to read just a little bit further uh, and go a little bit deeper. Can we go just a little bit deeper before we dismiss this morning? Uh, tucked away at the very end of Luke chapter 10 is, is we find Mary and Martha chilling out. Well, Mary was chilling, Martha wasn't. Now, if you know the story, I know you're thinking these two stories offer two completely different commands, but let's just take a closer look, especially in the context of today. We may just get a fuller picture. It says this in verse 38, as Jesus and his disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to him, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all the details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about and Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken from her. May I submit to us all here this morning that this is the goal. This is the vision. Mary was, was spot on. This is the way we love God by sitting at his feet. This morning, we had an opportunity to, to come to, to sit at the feet of Jesus as we lifted up our worship, as we lifted up 
uh, praise. She wanted to receive all that Jesus had. Us sitting at Jesus' feet signifies our readiness to engage with him. When we sit at his feet, we can cast our burdens on him. When we sit at the feet of Jesus, we can share our worries with him. We can pray for one another. We can share our wins, our setbacks. This is where he understands our plans and we understand his plans that he has for us. And at his feet, we find peace. This is, this is the vision. This is the goal, correct? Meanwhile, Martha had a twofold problem. She was distracted by her service. Sometimes our service can become a distraction. Sometimes it can. And I've seen it happen where we serve because we have a relationship with church and not with Jesus. And then something happens at the church that upsets us, remembering that church is the people, not the place, and therefore it's not perfect. And that becomes a distraction which then leads to distance. Distance from Jesus, I, 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 I had to linger on this word distance for a moment because for the, for the vast majority, perhaps through the last couple of years that we've had, I sense a number of us, there has been a distance between us and the Lord. I love this song, Thin Place, because it just, it highlights that, that the chasm is closed, that the Lord wants to draw near. And if I have an encouragement from somebody here today, it is, hey, hey come on, draw near. Draw near to if you're feeling distant from the Lord. Come on, come on, this is an invitation today to draw near, to, to pull in. Secondly, Martha was annoyed that Mary was sitting. But you know what? These two problems aren't irredeemable. This isn't the only time we see Martha serving and Mary sitting. In fact, later on in John 12, similar scenery. But Martha, this time, isn't reprimanded. And the other difference is that Martha isn't annoyed at Mary, which makes me think, and perhaps this is a question that I'll have for Jesus one day when I meet him, that perhaps Martha's problem in Luke 10 wasn't her busyness, but maybe it was her bitterness. I wonder this morning, sometimes when it comes, if sometimes when it comes to the call of God on our lives, when we we, we, we shy away from engaging with the Lord on whatever level that may be. We hide behind busyness when perhaps there is a little bit of bitterness, unforgiveness in our hearts. And I just feel like the Lord just wants to deal with that this morning. Like He wants to release you of bitterness. We're not gonna shout about it. We're not gonna say amen about it. I'm not expecting you to start clapping at this particular moment but I feel the Lord wants to do some internal surgery on our hearts so that when it comes to giving out and pouring out our lives, we do so from a full place, not from an empty place. We do so from a full place so that we are a blessing. It's not about getting you to be busier. When you serve in a community like this, this is where you build confidence. This is where you build friendships and you break awkwardness and you get invited to people's houses and you listen to their stories as they share life. This, this is family, this is, this is community and it's all well and said, good for you, buddy. You know, you're in there. No, 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 oh, no we're inviting you in. This is the place where you grow. It's, it's a direct correlation with loving God is, 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 is getting stuck in. This is, this, is, this is from that healthy place. Oh, come on, I sense the Lord wanting to deal with a little bit of that today. And as the worship team come up, I'm gonna wrap up and then we'll dismiss. Come up and play something awesome. Um, by Kanye West or something. Um, <laughs> here's, here's, here's the last thing. This, here's, here's, here's what this is about. Here's what Team Sunday, here's, here's, here's what this is all about. This is about the facilitation of a move of God. That's, that's what's happening here today. Here's, here's a headline. Here's a headline for you today. This is about a facilitation of the middle of God, move of God. Listen, I don't know why you may not serve a church. You know, I don't even wanna touch on, you know, consumerism in church culture versus contribution 
It's not even about that at this stage. There will be some valid reasons why some of you can't serve right now. The anxiety. Maybe you, maybe you are an NHS frontline worker and it's just been too hectic. Maybe you're a single parent and you need to organize your household and, and it's just practically impossible. Listen, I want you to know that we get it. There are some seasons where you need to rest and heal up and maybe for you, you need to just come here and sit and you know what, that's okay. That's okay, but I wanna prophesy over some of you this morning and declare a second wind over you. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I sense there's a second wind coming where the Lord wants to give you fresh faith, fresh vision, fresh strategy for this next season. I see him shifting things around. I see God orchestrating some things. I don't know if you realize, as I've said already, but God's on the move. We, we, we need to get ready. This place, this place is packed out on a Sunday morning. We need to get ready to multiply. Isaiah 54, verse two to three. Enlarge your house. Build an addition, spread out your home and spare no expense. For you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle ruined cities. C come on, Gastry. Come on, light for the city. This has never been and nor will it ever be about us. We're nothing but facilitators. We're nothing but vessels in this house that if we would just say to the Lord, Lord, pour into me, He will, He will pour into you. He will fill you up. Every time I come into this space, I want to come desperate. I want to come, I want to come hungry. Oh, son up to hell and welcome to, to cap today, to love your neighbour, to production, to worship. Not because we've got spaces to fill, but because you love God. Because you love people. Sign up because of that. Yes, we've got spaces to fill, but, but don't let that be the reason you sign up. Sign up because of love. Oh, sign up to kids. Youth team. Not because we could do with more team, you know, we could do it, but Sign up because you want to invest in the next generation. Sign up because our young people need some good role models and I'm looking at some good role models this morning and you look pretty good. Sign up because the most important thing we can, we can invest and offer the next generation is not necessarily a trust fund, though that's awesome, but actually it's to teach them to place their trust in Jesus. Thank you, thank you, sir. That is the most valuable thing that we can pass on to a 16 year old, is to teach them to place their trust in the Lord. That's why you sign up to serve. Because of a love, because of a passion for the house, a passion for the Lord. Oh, I wonder if for two, three hours in a month, you know, if we could just become a John 12 Martha. Others could be Mary on Sundays. Find Mary moments in the week. I wonder if this season of your life where you've been Mary for a couple of years, where you come here on a Sunday, you can tap into the commendable Martha in you that has a heart to serve from, not from a bitter place or from an empty place, but from a full place to help facilitate Mary moments. If someone said hello to you as you walked in today, guess what, it was a Martha. If someone served you a warm cup of tea or a coffee, guess what? It was a Martha. Woo! If someone took your kids off you today and you sat there sitting at the feet of Jesus, it was literally Martha. <laughs> it was a Martha. Speak of sitting, if you're sitting on a chair today, get who put, guess who put it up? It was Martha. Let's change the title of this message this morning and, sh and, and call it Shout Out to Martha. I mean, Martha doesn't get good airtime, but I just think, I just think, let's, can we give it up for the Marthas in the house this morning? Come on, come on, those that take the time to learn their music, to, to learn their chords, to come and be a blessing to us on a Sunday morning. 
If you're watching online, guess who's making this possible? Hey, Martha. Shout out to Martha. Take a cue from the Lord who says in the garden, not my will be done, but yours. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. What would you pay? What price would you pay for your prodigal son or daughter to come and give their life to Jesus? What would you pay for the person whom you love to come and receive the Lord here today, to come and be a Mary? Put a price on that. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to worship. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you in this house today that, Lord, it's, it's love. It's always been love. It always will be love. That's our drive. We serve not because there's a need. Yes, there are needs, but because we love you. That's why we turn up. So, Father, stir us up today. Fill us with your spirit. Come on, lift your hands. Come on. Come on, just receive today the strength, the power of Jesus today. Father, those of us who are desperate, those of us who are hungry for you, come right now and meet with us. We pray in Jesus' name. And someone with faith said, Amen. Come on, let's worship together.